Hello and welcome to our podcast on the academic structure of writing. We're going to talk through a structure that we call the PEA paragraph that we find exceptionally helpful for students when they are writing academic responses to prompts, whether that is in a language arts class, social science class, or pretty much any class in a K-12 environment. We find this structure to be exceptionally useful to students. We hope that they adopt this and internalize it and make it their own, but we wanted to talk through some of the key points of this structure to better talk about how this structure can be used all the time and transfer across any class where it might be needed. So like we said, we really suggest this for pretty much any academic response in pretty much any academic subject class because this focuses on the organization of the writing. It doesn't talk about the content of the writing, so it doesn't talk about the correctness of a biology paragraph or of a literary response paragraph in a language arts class. This is about organization. And so oftentimes you'll hear us talk about teaching the art and the science part of writing. And so this focuses on that science side where there are more objective rights and wrongs. Not to say that this is the only way to write an academic paragraph, but we are saying that if you do employ this structure, which we highly suggest, we do believe you're going to have more success because the thinking about how to organize the paper is done for you. Just follow the pattern. Then populate the skeleton of that paragraph with your good ideas, with your great word choice, with your interesting sentence diversity. But again, the PEA structure really focuses on the organization part. So while this is a structure for academic responses in terms of essay-like responses, this is not for creative writing. So if you are in a class that's asking you to write a narrative or a novel or a poem or something like that, then the PEA paragraph structure is not going to help you. That is not designed for that. And so like we said, the organization of this paragraph structure is predictable and therefore it helps your reader anticipate where you are going. And that is oftentimes what instructors and graders and assessors really need. They need a predictable structure to help them understand your writing and it helps the students be clear in their writing. And so it's almost like this agreed upon structure from both ends of the writing table that this structure does work and will help both sides accomplish their goals. Now clearly transitions are important and the writer needs to add those to help lead the reader through because clarity is the writer's responsibility. So if the reader doesn't get something, we're typically going to look back at the writer and say, oh, well, here's where you were not clear. Here's where you did not connect the dots. Here's where you lacked some specificity. And so this structure does force the writer to slow down and show what they mean, not just tell what they mean. And so we'll see that in the analysis structure, the A of the PEA structure. And so to be clear, the number of sentences in a paragraph is not important. I know we have heard that students have come in from various places saying, well, a paragraph has six sentences, or I've been shown how to make the 11 sentence paragraph. And there are overlaps with those other structures of writing. We're not saying that those have no merit, but the point of the PEA paragraph is the pattern to slow down, make a point, include the evidence that made you think that, and then develop the analysis in each little third of the paragraph to truly show how the evidence made you, the writer, think what you thought. And the beauty of this is that that basic structure where we're talking about a paragraph right now can easily be expanded into the typical five paragraph essay or the multi-page essay or the exceptionally long college paper. This structure of making a point, including evidence, and then taking time to analyze and explain really can be expanded to meet so many needs. So this structure of academic writing, the PEA paragraph, comes from a myriad of sources that we have put together to construct this idea. So it's not just our school's idea, it's not just our class's idea, it is a structure rooted in a lot of academic study of what makes good academic writing. And so the cornerstone book that we have referred to is called They Say, I Say, The Moves That Matter in Academic Writing. 
And their premise is that we as writers must first understand what we are responding to when we are being readers. So we have to fully understand what a text is saying, what a political cartoon is saying, then we can craft our response. And that oftentimes if our responses are in this structure, then they are more easily understood to the readers of our own work. So for example, if we are analyzing a political cartoon, we really have to analyze that cartoon and say, what is the cartoonist saying? Not what do we want them to say? Not, well, I instantly disagree with this, but really dig into what the original text is saying. That's the they say part. And once we have done that, and then we need to react to that, or analyze it, or synthesize it with something else, then we move over to the right and we move to the I say portion. And the I say is always what the writer is saying. This is the writer's reaction to something, the writer's perspective, the writer's analysis. And what we're arguing in this PowerPoint is the most effective structure for making that point is the PEA paragraph. So what is that structure? Here it is. We'll go through each color, go through each topic in a little bit more depth, but you can see that we're going to start with a claim and then we're going to offer three big chunks of why the writer thinks their claim is valid. And then you're going to wrap up the whole paragraph with a concluding sentence. And so like we said, that PEA paragraph is going to start with a claim. This is where the author is going to state their topic in their own words. And it's going to state the author's position on that topic, or maybe their opinion, or their interpretation, or their reaction to. The claim is not a statement of fact, because if it was, we wouldn't need an entire paragraph to explain it. We wouldn't need a paragraph to explain the fact that the kitchen table is where so-and-so does their homework. Okay, that's a fact. We don't need to persuade anybody. We don't need to offer analysis. That's what it is. That's not an appropriate claim sentence. But if someone wanted to argue that the kitchen table was the best place, to do homework at, now we're moving into a more appropriate claim statement because that's the author's topic, which is location of doing homework, and it is the author's opinion on or interpretation of that topic that the kitchen table is the best place to do something. And so we're going to start our PEA paragraph with that claim. And once we've made that overall claim, we then begin to craft the point. This is where the author gives their first reason why their claim is valid. And again, this would also be in the writer's own words. And so these three points, which are interspersed in the paragraph, is where the writer begins to shape why they think their claim is valid. This is where the writer starts to say, here are the big three reasons why the kitchen table is the best place to do homework. It could be that it is centrally located so they can get help from parents when they need it. It could be that it is a well-lit area in order to see their texts. It could be that it is far away from annoying siblings. Whatever those reasons are, the author has made the claim that the kitchen table is the best area to work in. And then they start to craft their points. And still, these are opinion-based because someone else could say, no, I think the living room is better. No, I think the bedroom is better. No, I think the garage is better. We typically want to see students write three points per paragraph. And again, this will extend into that five paragraph essay at some point where each point becomes its own paragraph and the points should be written in the writer's own words. We are not quoting from texts yet. So let's say an author has made a general claim. They've made their first point as to why they think that claim is valid. Then the author is going to need to include some evidence, some sort of detail from the text, some sort of chart, factoid, piece of evidence that helped shape their point, that helps shape their claim. So the E of the PEA paragraph or this PEA chunk is the idea of adding evidence, examples, descriptions, quotes, paraphrases, whatever. What the writer read or viewed that helped shape their interpretation of something. And so here is where we integrate quotes. Here is where we take something we've seen in a chart and put it into our own paper. Here's where we take a line from that novel that a character said and we integrate it into our paper. 
this is where we might want to watch the podcast on integrating quotes and how to frame them and how to cite them, because this is the part of our own academic writing where we borrow words from outside texts. This is where we as the writer are pulling in the information that shaped our thinking about why the kitchen table is the best place to study. So we've made our claim. We've made our first point, which is why we think what we think. We've pulled in evidence, which is the thing we read or the stat we saw that made us begin to think that our point and claim were valid. And then we get to the hardest part and we color it red in this model to force students to slow down, take their time, show not tell, explain in the analysis sections, the A sections, why this piece of evidence made you think that having good lighting was a good factor for pushing you to study at the kitchen table. And so oftentimes this analysis section is longer. It might be a couple sentences in length because this is the place where the writer has to make their thinking, whatever they're thinking about how the evidence shaped them, make their thinking clear to someone who isn't them. And that person they're trying to make it clear to is the reader of this paper. And so if you have a very simple topic, maybe that analysis is only one sentence. But if you're dealing with a very complicated or abstract theory you're trying to prove or point you're trying to make, you might need to make that analysis section a couple sentences long because however you're thinking, you have to organize that in the analysis section and make it clear to your reader. And once we have made one PEA chunk, one point, one piece of evidence, one section of analysis, then we repeat that two more times. That then becomes a complete PEA paragraph. So if you want to count sentences because for some reason that helps you at least have a base model, you can see that you're going to need at least a minimum of 11 sentences. One claim, point one, evidence analysis, point, evidence analysis, point, evidence analysis, and a conclusion. So even if you have a simple topic and you write one sentence for each individual box, that's a minimum of 11 sentences. But like we said, the more complicated the issue or interpretation or analysis or synthesis you are trying to write about, the longer the analysis of each point have to be. This is where you have to make your thinking clear to someone who isn't you, and it might take more than one sentence. So this is where you should slow down or even stop your forward motion and really explain how your thinking was prompted by the evidence, how that pushes your point to be valid, and how all of those things push your overall claim to be valid. And then finally, we do get to that concluding sentence or sentences. And here's where the writer is going to summarize the claims and the points made, leave the reader with a sense of closure and something to think about where the reader feels that the topic has been adequately addressed, that they feel satisfied that the argument presented in the claim was adequately addressed, and they feel like the argument has come to a conclusion. But we also want to make sure that we are not ending our concluding sentences with things like rhetorical questions like, I wonder what other areas of the house could be used to study. We don't want to add more information to the argument. We also don't want to ask the very immature and direct question of, what do you think? You've just spent the entire paragraph trying to explain why the kitchen table is the best place to study. This is you sharing what you think. The point is not to then ask the reader at the end, here's what I've said, what do you think? Because they can't answer you. They're not going to write their own PEA paragraph back. Make your points, cite your evidence, explain how the evidence shaped your thinking, and then adequately and comfortably conclude the paragraph. And so just a visual helper here, if you start at that analysis part, this is where you're explaining how the evidence you saw helped shape your belief that the point was valid. And then that whole chunk, that first PEA chunk, all adds into help explain why you think your overall claim is valid. You would then repeat that whole process for point two, evidence two, analysis two, and then for the third chunk. 
all of these reasonings have to go back to the overall claim. We don't want to include extra, unnecessary, irrelevant stuff. Stay focused. Remember what you're trying to prove. If your claim was that the kitchen table is the best area to do homework at, find three good points as to why the kitchen table is the best. Include three good pieces of evidence as to why the kitchen table is best, and then make three strong analysis statements about how that evidence does help support that overall claim you made. You're always tying it back to the claim. And like we said, the point of academic writing is to clearly communicate what the author is saying to someone who is not them. And so this structure of a PEA paragraph will help that need significantly. The other part that will also help the writer be clear to the reader is the use of transitions. So it's not just the simplistic first, second, third, first, next, then, as you transition between points. You may need, and we are encouraging you to add, transitions between every sentence. And again, we're not doing this to be mean. We're not doing this to create more work. We're doing this to push you to be a more clear writer. So if your job is to lead your reader through your explanation, then use the transitions as traffic signs. Here's where the writer slows down and says, now for a piece of evidence, and then include the evidence. And then the analysis, this explains, this connects, this justifies. But then let your reader know you're moving on to a whole new chunk. An additional reason why the kitchen table is the best is fill in the blank. This is defended by the piece of evidence from. This piece of evidence helps shape thinking because. So those small phrases or words really help the reader through. And that's ultimately what we want to see in academic writing, that the writer has clearly made an argument and that argument has been clearly made to the reader. It's not that that's going to necessarily change the reader's mind, but that the writer has been clear in their thinking and offered the reader a chance to truly see what the writer is trying to say. And so that's about it for this. This is the academic structure of writing, the PEA paragraph. This is going to be very foundational and very helpful to you as you continue your study through high school writing. We know that it works through high school, through college, through postgraduate work. This basic structure of point evidence analysis really helps writers to be clear and it helps readers to understand what writers are actually saying. As always, if you have any questions, please bring those into class. We'd be more than happy to get those answered for you. Otherwise, thanks so much, and we'll see you soon.